Well, good morning. Uh, today's uh, talk is about microneedling. Is microneedling beneficial? Is microneedling good for androgenic alopecia? Or it's just a sheer waste of time? So I would say that using microneedling in, in a background of androgenic alopecia is like beating a dying horse. Rather than nurturing the horse, making the wounds heal and recovery to happen, you are flogging a dying horse. Now, why do I say that? We'll discuss this after a brief outline of what microneedling is. What are the stated advantages of microneedling? What are the disadvantages of microneedling? And then we'll get into microneedling uh, and its usage in androgenic alopecia. So what is microneedling? Microneedling is the use of very small needles either in a roller device or in a stamp-like device used to inflict micro injuries on the scalp in an attempt to stimulate hair regrowth. And this can be used for a wide variety of, uh, of indications. Uh, number one, Androgenic alopecia it is being used in. It is being used for hair loss in women because of multifactorial reasons. It is used for many other reasons like poor hair, poor hair growth in the beard, alopecia areata, and host of others. So what are the uh, various devices that are available for microneedling? One is the micro roller, the derma roller which is a circular wheel like device, which you roll on your scalp and it comes in various needle sizes, size 1, size 1.1, size 1.2 are the commonly used sizes for uh, using derma roller on the scalp. And then we have a derma stamp. A derma stamp is a square shaped uh, stamp, stamping machine, which uh, you put on your scalp in up and down motion and you stamp the areas uh, over the scalp one by one and this is the second form of microneedling <clears throat> now what are the various mechanisms by which microneedling helps microneedling helps by increasing the flow of blood to the scalp around the thinning follicles and therefore momentarily increasing the nutrition of these hair and making them little robust for some time. Causing any micro needling, uh, causing any injury over the scalp, needless to say, causes micro injuries, which brings in a host of healing mechanisms into play, which causes by its nature, increase in blood flow, increase in certain uh, growth factors like platelet drive growth factor, endothelial growth factor, and a host of others. And this br brings in a cascade of healing events, which promotes growth, which promotes healing. And these and this benefit is also felt by the hair, hair follicles, which are there in the superficial layers of the skin. So microneedling also by another mechanism increases the growth of stem cells around the papillary cells by stimulation. So these are the uh, reasons why uh, microneedling is considered to be of benefit uh, in hair regrowth. And another uh, reason why it is used is before applying minoxidil, about half an hour to two hours before applying minoxidil, you create micro channels through which the absorption of these topical solutions is, met, is much better than otherwise it would be. So this is it. Uh, the uh, the use of microneedling, how uh, it benefits the skin. But in androgenic alopecia, is it really necessary? What is the underlying cause of androgenic alopecia? The underlying cause of androgenic alopecia is that the DHT, the male hormone dihydrotestosterone, acts on the follicles which are uh, rendered susceptible to DHT by genetics. It acts on these follicles, cuts off the blood supply and makes these hair follicles dwindle and, and, and soon disappear. Now, when you do microneedling, 
when you apply minoxidil, when you do laser treatment and a host of other treatments like PRP, etc., you are not addressing the prime cause that is causing your hair to thin. And especially when you are when you are young, especially when you are having diffuse pattern alopecia, that is dupa, these adjunctive treatments, while you are ignoring the elephant in the room, the DHT, which is calling you, causing your follicles to uh, to wither away is not being addressed you're just barking up the wrong tree these are just temporary treatments adjuncts without much individual benefit taken as standalone treatments they do not uh, stand the test of medical scrutiny it is not a very scientific method to use when when your baldness gene is uh, is uh, is active it is ravaging your scalp it is playing merry hell with your follicles this is not the way that you should go of course you are fearful of the fact that dht blockers taken over the long term may cause side effects but if you see a competent doctor in your locality a doctor who treats uh, hair loss uh, patients in a routine manner you will be able to be guided wisely whether you are a candidate for finasteride or not and mind you most of the patients 99 percent of the patients who have been guided properly who have a right mindset who are physically the appropriate candidates whose hormonal levels are normal will not have side effects with finasteride so the long and short of the whole uh, talk today is that Things like microneedling, things like PRP, things like minoxidil, they are just adjunctive treatments. They are not going to cure your androgenic alopecia. They are not DHT blockers. So using these treatments to treat your androgenic alopecia, especially when you are young, is like flogging a dying horse rather than helping it to survive. So that is a talk for the day. Microneedling for hair growth, for hair loss, for androgenic alopecia. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions for the next video session, for the next live session, do let me know. Drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll be happy to include it. Have a nice day and God bless you.